Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're gonna do this. We're creating abstract dynamic clones in Cinema 4D. Okay, so we've got a really simple setup here. We've just got a Cinema 4D sky and we've got a HDR map on there to give us a bit of light. So we'll kick things off by coming up here and bringing in a plane. And I think the default settings for this are fine for now. So we want to give this plane a bit of animated displacement. So with our plane selected, we'll come up to the deformers menu here and we'll bring in a displacer. Remember to hold shift so it's automatically applied, like so. Then we'll leave these settings for now and go over to the shading tab. So we want to use a bit of noise to drive the deformation of this. So let's click this little arrow and we'll grab a noise. So now we can see that noise shader is giving us a bit of displacement here. And this might be a tad easier to see if we come up here and turn those lines on. Okay, I think we might wanna tweak this. So let's go and click into here to bring up our noise settings. We want this noise to be quite extreme and less of the fine details in there. So we'll bring up the global scale first. Let's stick an extra zero in there. And we also want this to be animated. So let's give it a bit of animation speed, maybe a value of one for now, and we'll give that a play. Okay, we're getting there. Let's go back to our displacer and we'll head over to the object tab and we can make this a bit more intense by cranking up the height. Let's try 150 centimeters. Then we'll hit play and see how this looks. Okay, I'm happy with that. This is going to be our underlining animation. The next thing we wanna do is clone a bunch of spheres onto this plane and have them animate along with it. So let's come back up here and we'll bring in a sphere. Then we'll just hide that plane for a second so we can see this. It's always a good idea to keep the polygon count down when we're using dynamics. So we'll come over here and we'll bring those segments down to about 12. I'm also not a big fan of the standard sphere because it gives us these nasty poles and some pretty uneven geometry. So let's change the type to octahedron. And now we've got some nice even geometry and hopefully we'll get a better dynamic sim. Now we're going to make loads of these spheres so we might just scale it down as well. So let's just bring our radius down to about five centimeters. I think that looks about right. So let's go and turn our plane back on. And now we wanna clone a bunch of these spheres onto the surface of our plane. So with our sphere selected, we'll come up to MoGraph and we'll grab a cloner. Now, when we bring this in, we wanna hold Alt instead. So it's automatically applied. And we can see that up here. And we've got our clones cloning this direction because we're set to linear over here. But we wanna change that to object. And the object we wanna use is the plane. So we'll grab that and drag that into here. And now we've got a bunch of spheres cloning across the surface of our plane. If it's not working for you, just make sure you've got surface selected down here under distribution. So right now we've only got 20 of these spheres, but we wanna cover the entire surface of our plane. So let's bring this up to something like 1000. Okay, that's better. Let's hit play and see how this is looking. Cool, all of those spheres are following along with the animation there. Let's pause that. And we can probably hide the plane now. Let's just click on the stoplights. And we'll take a quick squiz how this looks without the plane. All right, we're getting there. We also don't need to see those lines anymore. So we'll go up here and just switch those off. Okay, so whenever these spheres go upwards, we want them to scale up and change color. So let's work on the scaling part first. With our cloner selected, we'll come up to MoGraph, Effector, and we'll grab a Shader Effector. And you can see we're already getting a bit of scaling in there. And that's because if we go to the parameter tab, we've got scaling enabled here. Let's just change this value to one so they can scale a little bit bigger. So now we wanna use the same noise that we're using to drive the animation of the plane to also control the scaling of our clones. So we'll stop that and rewind it. Then we'll head over to the displacer. We need to find that noise, which is back under the shading tab. Here he is. Then we'll right click and copy that. Then we'll switch over to the shader effector and to the shading tab, we need to paste that noise into here. So right click, paste. And now if we play that back, we are getting a little bit of scaling in there, but it's very subtle. So to make that effect a bit more obvious, let's go into our new noise here. And if we scroll down a bit, we can actually adjust the clipping and the contrast to fine tune how the noise affects our scaling. So let's start by bringing up the low clip and you can see how that's affecting it. 
Now these guys up here are a bit bigger and these ones are a bit smaller. Then we can go and try the high clip. If we bring that down, we can have more of these spheres scaling up. And finally, we can adjust the contrast. So we've got more of a difference between the big ones and small ones. And you can just play around with these settings until you get a look you're happy with. Let's see what this looks like when it's animated. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. So now we can start setting up the color. You might have noticed we've already got some black and white shading in here. And that's because if we go back to our shader effector, under the parameter tab, we've got the color mode enabled here. But I actually want to control the color with a separate shader effector. So we can have one to control the color and one to control the scale. So let's call this one scale. And we'll come down to the color mode and switch that to off. Now everything goes back to white. Then we'll come back to our shader effector and holding control, we'll drag up another one to create a duplicate. And let's rename this one to color. And we wanna do the reverse for this one. Let's turn off the scale effect and we'll turn the color mode on to effector color. And we're not seeing any color over here yet because this color effector is not actually affecting our cloner yet. And we can check that by clicking on our cloner and going to the effectors tab. And in our list of effectors here, we've only got the scale shader effector. So we need to add the color shader effector as well. So we'll drag him into here and straight away we've got our colors back. Although it's just grayscale at the moment, we've just got black to white values. So we need to add a bit of color in here. So back to our color shader effector, we'll go to the shading tab. And now we're going to use the black and white values of our noise to drive some colors. So let's click here and we'll color it with a colorizer. And by default, that gives us this red and yellow color scheme. And if we hit play, you can see that's working and looking pretty cool. Now we can customize the colors here. If we click into the colorizer, here's our default colors and you can change these to whatever you like. Let's try a green and maybe we'll make this one blue. And the color down this end is for the spheres when they grow to their full size. So let's just leave that as yellow and we'll give that a play. And I think that's looking pretty good. We can easily adjust this as well. If we come down here, we can just move these knots and you can tweak which clones are affected by each color. We could also click into the noise here and adjust this in the clipping values down here. Because the shader is only affecting the color, changing these won't affect the scaling or the animation. So we can use this to just fine tune the fall off in our colors. And I think I'm liking the look of that. So the next thing we wanna do is stop all these spheres from intersecting with each other. And the way we're going to do that is by making them dynamic. So with our cloner selected, let's come up to tags, simulation tags, and we'll make this a rigid body. And we'll go over to the collision tab, and we want all of these spheres to be treated individually in our simulation. So we'll go down to individual elements and set this to all. And now if we hit play, it explodes and they shoot off everywhere, which is not what we want. We need these guys to sort of stick to the plane once they've been made dynamic and not shoot off everywhere. So what we can do is go to the force tab and we need to tell these clones to follow the position and rotation of our plane. So we'll just put a small value in here and see if it works. We'll try five in both of these. And if we give that a play, now we're starting to get somewhere. We've almost completed our effect here, but one thing I like to do whenever I use follow position and rotation is bring in a little bit of damping. This just limits the amount of energy within our simulation and tends to minimize the jitter. So we'll just bring that up to 10% in both of these and we'll try that. Okay, I think we're ready to start rendering this. Let's just stop that there and we'll come up here and fire off a render and see what we've got. Okay, that's not good. We've hidden the plane, but it's still visible in our render. So let's grab that guy and we'll come up to tags, Cinema 4D tags, and we'll grab a compositing tag. And all we need to do with this tag is uncheck all of these. So the plane will be active, but no longer visible in our render. Let's give it a try. Okay, that's looking much better. But at the moment, all of these colors are just being generated by our color shader effector up here. If we want full control over the material here, 
we need to come down here and double click to create a new material. And we'll drag that onto our cloner here. And you'll notice that overwrites the color we have in our viewport, but we can fix this easy enough. Let's go into our new material. And we need to tell the color channel to use the color from our shader effector. So where it says texture here, we'll click on this little arrow and we'll come down to MoGraph and we'll grab a color shader. And straight away, that seems to have worked. And now that we've set it up this way, we've got a lot more control over our material. We could, for example, add a bit of reflectance. We'll change the type to GGX, bring up the strength, or maybe not. We'll take that roughness down, maybe the specular strength, and we'll give that a render. Okay, now our spheres are nice and glossy looking. I might just bring those down just a tad and close that up. And now that we're ready to render, I might bring in a bunch more clones. So we'll go back to the cloner and back down here to the count. Let's crank that up to maybe 3000 and we'll play that back. And that's just about it for this effect. There's just one last thing to do before we send off our final render. We need to bake the animation. So let's go back up here to our dynamics tag and over to the cache tab. We just need to hit bake object or bake all. And then it's going to do its thing and bake those frames. And when it's done, you'll see the memory usage here. And you might also like to bake in the MoGraph data, which will also bake in the colors. So you shouldn't get any issues when you go for your final render. So with our cloner selected, we'll go to tags, MoGraph tags, and we'll bring in a MoGraph cache tag. Then we'll hit bake on that too. And now you're ready to render. You might get a few dodgy frames at the beginning of the animation, just while these spheres are settling down, but you can choose not to render those or you can just comp them out later in post. And that is pretty much it for this tutorial. So see what you can make with this technique. And as always, you can download the project file below to save a bit of time. And if you feel like supporting the channel and taking your Cinema 4D skills to the next level, you can check out our full online courses at cgshortcuts.courses. If you've got any questions or requests for tutorials, just plonk them down below in the comment section and I will catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section below, or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. Catch you next time.